I just wanted to talk about shortly after I became a hand hygiene auditor and started doing audits in our department, um, I have to say I was really proud of our staff and um, I think they were getting like between 90 and 95 per cent um, compliance. So that was a big achievement. Um, and I just wondered too, had they actually seen Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Had they seen me coming and they're on their best behaviour? Apologise for this. Um, and shortly after I submitted some of those audits, I received an email from Hand Hygiene Australia just saying to us, you know, your compliance is really good and how do you think we achieved that? Um, I think I said at the time, I think it's the procedures and uh, all the training we have in place that's really helped us in that department. So I'm here to talk about that today, um, what's working for us in our department, and also um, what changes we've made over the years to achieve that compliance. So firstly, when I started back at Enrichment Health Centre, um, I had a really good supervisor and she took me through a very thorough orientation. Um, everything from our emergency procedures to, let's see if it's working now. Um, right through to infection and control and hand hygiene. And today our practice manager still does the same and she has a two page checklist that she goes through. Um, it's really comprehensive and it makes sure all the staff know everything. Um, it was during that time through my orientation that I was introduced to what we call bench level instructions. Um, it was a quite a thick folder and it contained about 40 to 45 um, instructions in it and they were, they looked like this. So it was a flow chart of every procedure that we had to do in our section. Um, so this is one for our waterline disinfection. And you may notice there's something missing if you read that. There was no reference to hand hygiene or wearing protective gear. When I first got that folder, I thought to myself, oh my God, how am I ever gonna learn all of those procedures but I did. I found them really handy. I kept them in my surgery and just went over them time and time again until I got them right. Following that, I was given a lot of training in these procedures by my supervisor and my peers. And today we still do that. Um, with any new staff that comes, we actually have a buddy system where we'll put a more experienced staff member in with one of our new staff and they'll work side by side and just until they feel like they've got it right and they're feeling more confident. So this is a slightly newer version. I think this was put out in 2008, this particular version of our bench level instructions. Um, at that same time, Defence actually released or introduced the Defence Health Manual. So we really looked into it a little bit more. You can see in these green highlighted areas that we've actually started to put hand hygiene into the, those instructions. So we used to update these yearly and we still do. Um, and just put any changes into them that need to be made. In 2016 though, we were instructed to put these bench level instructions into a new format. And they are now to be called work instructions. At that time, it was like, oh my God, you know, we've got 40, 45 of these to change. But it gave us the perfect opportunity to actually really look at the procedure. And um, you'll notice in this one here, it's a very step-by-step -step instruction. And what we really looked at was putting 
wearing PPE and performing hand hygiene into that exact, exact moment where it was needed to be performed into that procedure. Um, the good thing about these now, we have them on a database and our staff can access them at any time. We also, in rooms where we can't access them, like our central sterilising room, we've actually taken these work instructions, we've laminated them and we've placed them on the wall so that they're pretty much in your face and you can just keep referring to them whenever you need to. This work instruction, or the new one we did in 2016, is actually a very shortened version, of, again, of what we've done. And today they look more like this. They're quite a bit of a formal process we go through when we're redoing these. So you can see on this one we have the references of where we get our information. We have our background as to why we carry out that particular procedure. We have the aim of the instruction, and that's to outline the correct procedure for each staff to follow. And the scope is who uh, that instruction applies to. Again, you can see highlighted in green, um, hand hygiene and PPE. This is again still a shortened version. I won't, didn't fit the other bit in. But down the bottom, that's usually signed off by the person who actually wrote the work instruction and up, or updated it. It goes from us, or usually my supervisor and myself, to the senior dental officer, and he checks over every single part of that procedure, and then he will make any corrections if they're needed, and he will also then send it off to the health centre manager for approval. The other thing we do a lot of in our dental section is we're really big on training. Um, so every four to six, or I should say four to six times a year, we do continuous training days. And on these training days, we do refresher training on our infection control policies and standards. Staff also present topics of interest and we learn about the new pro uh, products, including hand hygiene products. Um, we do team building and activities such as glitter bug. That's so much fun, I really like that. We've done scenarios um, where we've done, <laughs> we've done one recently where someone dressed up as a really scruffy and um, they were actually cleaning instruments in this scenario. They did no hand hygiene, wore no PPE and wore thongs and were <laughs> cleaning the instruments over the sink and spit polishing them. <laughs> it was pretty gross but quite funny and to add to that, they had a cigarette hanging out of their mouth. <laughs> so it was quite funny. On the CT days, we also demonstrate those work instructions. So we practice them and demonstrate them. One team member will read it out and the other will demonstrate it. So we, we do little role plays sometimes too with them if it requires, uh, if the procedure's to do with a patient. Um, at one stage, we just used to read them out and it was so droll and boring that we decided to make it more interactive with everyone and, um, you know, they all got to have an input with everything. Um, so with regular training in these particular procedures, the staff became really familiar with the sequence of them and uh, they it just became second nature to them. So they just followed this step by step and they still do today, thankfully. Um, while we're doing those demonstrations, we actually do our updates on the procedures now. Um, with all the staff there, they can all have an input into how they're written, and staff are referring to these work instructions all the time. Um, 
And I think they're really simple and they could be implemented into any practice. The other part of our training is annually we do an infection control presentation. It's compulsory for us to do in the defence um, and it's put out by Joint Health Command. So that includes the five moments of hand hygiene and we also um, need to complete our annual hand hygiene online learning module, which is with Hand Hygiene Australia. And believe me, if you don't, the supervisor's chasing you to do that. Um, we do our five moments of hand hygiene separately using those videos on the Hand Hygiene website. Um, they're so useful and Sorry, and um, there is a dental PowerPoint on there for us to have a look at. And I'm really actually looking forward to the new dental module on there. I read about that the other day when I was on the site. I'm sure my staff will all be saying, oh no, not again, she's at us again. <laughs> this time for the first year, we decided to bring in hand hygiene competency testing. So this is some of our ladies here doing that task. And I'd just like to point out the top slide here, or the top photo here. This is what we see when we walk into our centre. This little setup here we have with the alcohol-based rub is there for our patients and anyone walking into the building. Our contractors are so used to us looking down at them and when they come in now they go to it as well. And that's really good. Even the staff when we walk in of a morning, we just go straight to that little area and give ourselves a good clean there. Next year, what we've discussed doing is doing some short videos um, of all our procedures and they'll include showing us what to do and then we'll do some also on what not to do. And we also uh, do, plan to do some more further training on aseptic technique as well, and probably do a competency test in that. So every fortnight we hold section meetings. So if we've walked around and seen anything that we think isn't going so well or doesn't look right, we will discuss it there. And particularly if it comes to hand hygiene. I'm, I'm usually the one bringing it up and hounding about it. Um, but likewise, we also talk about what is working for us. Um, and that gives the staff some really good feedback. Um, quarterly, we have our infection control meetings with the health centre. Um, and this is where we do report our audits. Um, our hand hygiene audits and our infection control audits. And we don't just talk about them, but we, we sit there and discuss what we're going to do if these things aren't right. And we're going to talk about how we're going to make those improvements. We also have a dental section infection control meeting. Um, we talk about more dental specific things and this is where we've talked about our hand hygiene audits and products and all our staff attend those and this is where after those audits I can give them a pat on the back and say well done. Um, we also conduct our hand hygiene audits and our infection control audits and our infection control audits also include hand hygiene. Um, so, um, at the mo well, up until recently, I was the only auditor in the section in the whole health centre. But recently, we've got two new auditors, um, Beck and Ty, and we have did our first little audit in another section of dental and uh, not sorry, not dental, within the hospital. And after about half an hour, we just went, oh my God, 
we really need to do some training here. So that's what we have planned for next year. We're going to go into that section, start some training and uh, see how that goes. We also have a hand sorry, an IPC SharePoint that all the staff can go to. This was set up out by our National Infection Control Coordinator. Um, we can go there at any time. It's on our computer database. We talk about infection control policies, our standards, best practice and hand hygiene information. So we can access that. I'd just like to talk about something really important, which is the placement of our hand hygiene products and our signage and our gloves. So anyone who's been into a dental surgery will probably know how small that some of these rooms are. So that's a lot of product for one surgery. Um, but we've uh, conveniently placed them around the room just for ease of access and also as a visual reminder. All our other uh, rooms as well, our central sterilisation room and even our tea room, we all have hand hygiene products when we come and leave those places. I'd just like to show you a little map of our dental surgeries. Um, you can see here where we've placed our alcohol rub and that's in the green crosses. So the clinician has access right next to to them, the assistant has one behind them, and right at our doorway entrance we have one when we enter and exit as well. We have hand washing product over our sink and the pink dots here show where our moisturiser is kept. I don't, I'm not sure how good our compliance is with uh, using moisturisers, so that's something we also need to look at in the future. So just summing up everything, I just uh, wanted to say that um, I believe that we're getting really good compliance and it's mainly in our written procedures, our work instructions in particular, our continuous training that we hound into everybody and pretty much the strategic placement of our hand hygiene products. Um, and I think that sums it all up. So thank you for listening.